Hey fellas, welcome to another progress update of my project I'm making, an easy FPS editor. Quite a bit has changed since the last video I made. The biggest thing is this big open landscape I have. I've been working on boundary walls over there. You got some lovely grass over here. You'll see a little structure down there. My plan is to build like little houses and maybe a little village, maybe a forest or cemetery or something. But the main attraction is obviously this place. The idea was to make a dungeon crawler, so this will be map one. It'll maybe start somewhere down there in the village or something. And then get sent to this, I guess, castle place. And then you'll fight a boss somewhere here. And then progress down to the dungeons, which will be level two onwards. I'll just show you what I've been doing here. I've been trying to make like little hills. Or just like little changes in the environment to make it look not so flat. So I don't know if I'm going to stick with this. It looks kind of Minecrafty, but just some custom modifiers to raise the grass a bit. Then we have this kind of rocky wall texture with a little bit of grass on top. And then I'm going to put a bunch of trees along the edges of these walls, just so it doesn't look so boring. And then here I tried a different variation with this rock kind of sticking out a bit. And yeah, just playing around with that. And then here on this side, I use some custom modifiers again. Just the default ones to add um, like curved walls, trying to make a bit of a rocky looking formation. Down there's a bunch of nothing. And then I'll just show you what the plan is. I'm going to go into build mode. I built these boundary walls so you don't see the empty void over there. So the plan is to have um, all these trees here. I have a few different trees and a bush, dead bush. Yeah, the plan is just to go along these walls here place a bunch of these trees make like slight variations in the trees so it doesn't look so weird but yeah I'll probably do this a bit later um, this is just to give you the rough idea of what I'm going for some of these smaller ones in the background and yeah when I'm done with that I'll have a bunch of trees there on top of this boundary wall so it looks a bit spooky like that and then I got this bush here as well. It was like all pretty and pink, but I changed it to make it like blood red to fit the vibes of this game. And yeah, my plan was to put them somewhere here, like on this side and that side. So that'll be another mission for another day. Yeah, these trees I got from um, like a free image website, Vecteezy. I got a bunch of free PNGs and then just opened them in SLK image to pixel. And just made them a bit darker, changed the color palette a bit. Then I uh, have some fences that I got from the same website. And then just uh, dropped the quality. I think it's 256 by 256. And then I made some custom modifiers to push them to the left of the block. And this one is pushing them to the right of this block. And it works. You can't walk through it, so that's working nicely. And then last night I placed these torches, animated decorations. I placed them with build mode and then I added a light source on the block as well so it looks like it's giving off light and yeah I added these lights um, not on the default grid but with scripting which I'll show you just now so here we have blood mode it's pretty grim these are animated floor textures then I have a custom modifier on this block to make it look like it's going underneath the block almost like a bridge or something and then this texture here I took a cobblestone texture and then opened it in a sprite and then just um, layered this grass underneath these cobblestones and then I just removed the cracks of the cobblestone so that the grass is sticking out so it looks like it matches quite nicely so yeah this just goes all the way down there to the boundary wall blood moat pretty metal okay I guess before we go inside I'll show you the new weapons we have so these are the new updated weapons and then those three down there are the old ones that need updating I'll start with the sword. So if, as you can see, the weapons now have hands holding them. I got this hand from a huge sprite sheet. I think it's the hand sprites from the game Blood. So I just opened the sword and the hand in a sprite at first and just layered them on top of each other. But my good friend Kunu, who's in my Discord, showed me the way of Pivot. Pivot Stickman Animator. I used to use that a lot when I was a kid to make little animations. He told me that you can use it now to animate your sprites and stuff. 
So I've animated this sword swing using Pivot Animator. And I think it looks much better than the old one. If you go check out my first progress update and look at this one, you'll see it looks much better. And just feels better too. So I got the sword with the uh, hand. Then we have this mace. And Kunu actually animated this one for me to demonstrate the power of Pivot. So this is like a little chop down. You can bonk your enemies on the head. Very nice. Here we got this axe. Also a bonk on the head motion. This one's not my favorite, but it works for now. Then we got the lance here, or the spear. And that's just a simple poke attack. Very deadly. Same with this dagger. I don't like how the hand is holding the dagger. That's the only thing that's putting me off, but it works too. And then the most exciting weapon I have now is this little medieval looking hand grenade. Also animated in pivot. Check this out. Right. Isn't that cool? And it bounces off surfaces so you can like roll it on the ground. We can chuck it in the air. And it's really fun to use. Oh damn, I forgot about the cockroaches. <laughs> That's one of the new enemies I added. Just uh, horrible, horrible cockroaches. And they flop on their back like that. And I also put these sprites through SLK. Changed the color palette to make it look a little retro and cool. And I still have to go through all my old enemies and just touch them up with some color palette changes and um, that kind of stuff. So that'll be next. And you can see all these weapons, they're on the same color palette. I'm actually using the Quake color palette. Just so everything looks a bit more cohesive, if that's the word. Cool, so those are the weapons. Now we'll get to the main attraction, this place. So here I've made some custom modifiers for the fence. And they look okay for now. Then I found these really cool stained glass windows. And they have a bit of transparency on them. So you can see through the windows. I'm also going to try and add like a really big gate. That'll take up four blocks. We'll have to see how that works. So here's the new and improved dungeon area. I've got some new floor textures. And I did a poll. I took a vote to see who likes the dark bricks. Versus like a more lighter brick. And most people said they like the dark bricks. So... That actually helps a lot and saves me a lot of time. Since I don't have to change anything. Here's an empty room. Here's some empty cells. Then we go in here. I think this will be the exit towards uh, map 2. That'll take you to the proper dungeon. Going downwards. Then here we have the new and improved main hall. With some new wood textures. And we've got the lovely windows over there. And these are just cells as well. With dirty floor. As you can see here, these windows aren't leading outside, so it's pretty dark. But then if you look over on this side, you can see the windows have now a light effect. I added some lights using a scripting. You don't have to use scripting, but it's pretty fun, actually. And it doesn't take up space on your grid then. Now we have some light coming through the window, as if the moon's shining inside or something. And yeah, shout out to Kunu again for the idea. Uh, this was a great idea, and it works nicely. So now we have torch light sources and these window light sources. And I think it looks really nice. So I'm pretty happy with this area. Then you head up these stairs here. First I built this section. Which takes you up here. Got some railing. It takes you up to the roof. Here's the roof area. I just need to make some custom modifiers for corners that include this piece and this piece. Then we have the fencing outside here too. And these little cubes with custom modifiers on it. To make it shorter and then here's the main staircase that takes you to the top of this building and i'm thinking we'll have a boss fight up there and he'll hold the key that can take you to the dungeon it's just an empty little arena and i think a big fight will go down here that'll be pretty cool and then same on this side we have another entrance to the roof another little staircase so when you come up here you can go that way or that way and then this just leads to Nothing, basically. <laughs> so I'm either going to build more that way, or in there. Not too sure what to do with this yet, but it's there. So yeah, that's the whole inside of this area now, done. And I've placed some invisible blocks here, so people can't fall into the abyss. So you can't go further than this. And even if you try and jump across here, can't do it. So, yeah. 
Don't even try, go there. It's uh, not allowed. Then here's the view from the top. You can see the blood moat over there and there. And I guess if you stand up here, you'll be able to see all the little buildings and forest area I'm going to build. But yeah, that's basically it now. That's what I've been working on. I just need to get decorating with trees and bushes and buildings and stuff. That's the next step. For now, my focus is the map building. I've been putting off for way too long. Oh yeah, and I also have this like background image I got from VecDZ as well. Threw it in SLK. Changed the color palette. Now I'll show you some of the behind the scenes stuff. Here's the sprite sheet I told you about. This was sent to me by TJ. Thank you, TJ. And it contains a bunch of different hand sprites from like Duke Nukem, the Doom Guy's hands, Hexen hands, and I went for all these ones. Blood hands. My first approach was to take the weapon and add the hand and then just layer them together like this. Which is a good method. But then as I said, Kunu informed me that Pivot Animator is the way to go. You can load up your sprites in here. So here you can see I have the, the hand sprite and the bomb sprite separate. Then you can add rotations, change the size, and then, yeah, you just move it slightly. And then you update frame, and you make a bunch of different frames, and you get some pretty smooth results. And you can set the canvas size here to perfectly match your game. So what you see here is what you see in the game, which is really useful. It's a little bit difficult at first to animate nicely in this, but it really gets the job done. Kuni tried to convince me to use this for quite a while, and eventually I gave in, and I don't regret it at all. It's a great idea. Thanks, Kuni. So yeah, you can do your animations here, then you can export all of them as separate images, then you can open SLK image to pixel, load your sprites in here, you can add a color palette. These are the default ones it comes with, so you have Quake, you have the Doom color palette there as well. So I've been using the Quake palette. You can change the scale here. You can change all a bunch of different color settings. So you can add dithering to make it look more pixelated. And it's been working really nicely. So I recommend a combination of Pivot and SLK. Again, thank you Kunu for convincing me to use this program too. I was on the fence for a long time, but it makes everything look much better. So last night I learned how to create lights using scripting. So basically you can just open Notepad++ or whatever. If you check the unofficial wiki and you scroll down to scripting, there's everything you need to know here about how to spawn entities and spawn things using scripting. So I went down to here, uh, light and world, and then this is how you can create a light using a scripting. The benefit of doing it this way is that it doesn't take up any space on your grid. See, because I wanted to add a light here and here, but I already have a custom modifier and a fence here. So I couldn't manually place the light object over there. So then I went and did it like this. So those are the two lights that are created there. That's the X, Y, and Z offsets. This is the radius of the light. And then this is the RGB values for your lights. And then, yeah, then you can just save it in your scripts folder and name it your map name dot script. And then it'll work. And then these are the lights I created by the windows. And then Here's entity spawn at position. So I spawned these lamp skulls where I placed these lights. But I did this using build mode. So if you watch my tutorial on breakable walls, you'll see how build mode works. So eventually this will just be a list of entities and things I've created in the map that won't take up space on your grid, which is pretty cool. And then this is my loop script for the grenade that I showed you. I have no idea how this works, it's a bunch of gibberish to me, but I got a lot of help, all thanks to Kunu and TJ. They both helped me at the same time to get this working. I can't explain it, but it just works. You put this in your loop script, you add a grenade weapon and a grenade enemy, which is actually the thing that you throw, and it works. Big shoutouts to Kunu and TJ for helping me. I also changed the ambient color to make it a little bit darker, so that those lights really pop. Oh yeah, and here's the custom modifiers I've been using. So this is for my torches that you see on the walls. Pushes them against the wall, makes them flat. My torch is actually a wall texture, and without the modifier it would be a cube, so this is a good way to do it. Then we have stairs going north, south, east and west. We've got some railing as well. 
we got the fence, which is the same as the wall decoration, just with collision. This one has no collision, and this one does. We've got more railing for each side. We've got that quarter block for the blood moat to go underneath. And I was making a short wall, but I don't like how it looks, so I'll probably change this one. Yeah, so those are the custom modifiers I've been using. And that's about all for now. That's the progress update for today. Feel free to join my Discord. It's really helpful if you're starting out an easy FPS editor and you have some questions, a bunch of friendly fellas, and we got some other random channels, self-promotion, you know, other game engines too, music and art, food, pets. Here's the easy FPS editor section if you need help with anything. As you can see, everyone's always willing to help. And here we also have shared assets, like my friend Johnny over here, who's been sharing his 3D models that he makes in Blockbench. A few 3D models here. I believe there's some code and stuff in here as well, some scripts. A lot of useful stuff here if you're just getting started out. There's that sprite sheet of hands that really came in handy. And yeah, we've got tips and tricks. We've got useful tools and programs you can use. Yeah, we post a bunch of helpful videos. And you can also keep up to date with my videos that I share here. And then we have the voice channels that are pretty active almost daily. Quite a bunch of us get together most nights and just share our progress. We get live help. We can share our screens and show you exactly what to do and that kind of thing. And yeah, we've got a section for gaming as well. Feel free to join. Link will be in my description and on my main page. And we'd be happy to have you here. I'm also really excited to show you this. If you go to the main easy fps editor download page here on itch if you scroll down a little bit you'll see that my and kunu's servers over here listed as beginner friendly discord servers which is pretty cool there's also the original um, server over here with many more members but yeah it's generally less welcoming and that's putting it politely so yeah i'm really excited that we've been featured here big thank you to clark who's the current developer of this engine and still supporting it with new updates and new alpha builds. And we also have Mr. Clark in both of our servers. So big shout out to Clark. Thank you very much for featuring us on your itch page. Really appreciate that. And lastly, my coffee page. We've reached 22% of my goal. I have some cash saved up as well. My plan is to get this PC by end of year, hopefully. And any support would be really appreciated. And I'll find a way to credit you or throw you some props within my game, either in a secret area or like a, I don't know, a painting or a statue of you or something. I'll find a way to uh, give you a shout out within my game. I'll make it funny. Thank you, dudes. Have a great day or night. I'll see you in the Discord. We'll chat there and I'll see you in the next video as well. Thanks for watching.